Today from the Ed Ed, I thought I'd uh, introduce this Burroughs Type 1 adding and listing machine. Uh, this machine was probably one of the first machines I kind of noticed at um, indoor um, uh, uh, antique shop, flea market. Um, actually, it's a strange world. Uh, I wind up actually buying two of these machines. Uh, there was one at this um, um, antique store in the basement and it was missing uh, the, this whole carriage mechanism and it sat there for a year and I was curious as to what in the world this thing was because especially without the carriage I couldn't figure out what it was I'd never seen such a thing and as you can see I got it on a turntable the, this thing has a serious amount of gravity uh, by the way, I'm trying to get this thing downstairs my knees just about gave up from under me and I just about lost it so, um, the thing is stunningly heavy. Uh, very, if ever there's heavy math, this is heavy math. The, the, the machine, anyways, I saw at the uh, indoor flea market, like I said, had no mechanism back here, and so it was a complete mystery. I'd never seen this thing before, these things before, and I thought, and it, this is before I got into this calculator crazy hobby, and I thought, well, what an abomination of a machine. What in the world is this thing? It seems so ill-conceived and just a horrible machine, right? Well, I'd go back every once in a while, and it was still sitting there along with some other stuff, and uh, got more intrigued by it, and then I started getting the calculator hobby a little bit, and started to learn more about this thing, and found out it was really quite a remarkable mechanism, especially for its era. It was amazingly ambitious. This is kind of it's really more than just an adding machine. It's kind of a um, equivalent of data processing for the day. Um, this machine actually has more than just simply numbers on it. It actually has um, the first digits of the day of, or the letters of the day of the month that were in this column here. And the later machines uh, are, are capable of subtraction. And I believe this is one of those machines that's actually capable of doing most subtraction. Most adding machines can't just inherently do subtraction basically reverse the machine. I think it might be this lever here. So it's a very ambitious machine for its era. It was basically the first adding machine made especially for being able to print. It's interesting right about the same time the comptometer by Torrington and Felt was also developed and it's interesting to see uh, the lineages of these two machines because the Comptometer. It's made out of mostly sheet metal. It's a fairly lightweight machine, comparatively speaking. Whereas this guy definitely is in the era of cast iron. And just, like I say, if ever they find out how black holes work, they might find out that they're full of these things. Because, uh, talk about serious amounts of gravity. This thing is insanely overbuilt. Uh, you could make a car out of a lot of these parts. And it, <laughs> or, or, you know major agricultural implements or something like that. It's just so heavy. Oh, and uh, this turntable, I wish was a little bit better built. But anyhow, it's, it keeps me from having to move this really heavy thing around. So, um, it, it, I don't know really a whole lot about this particular machine. Um, like I say, I saw one on Craigslist, on, on, no, sorry, on, at this antique mall, and I decided, well, what the heck, I'm just going to buy the thing. But right around the same time I saw this one, on Craigslist, and the guy wanted two hundred and fifty dollars, which I thought was really kind of absurd for this thing. And so I waited for the Craigslist ad to basically run out, and, and I, you know, emailed him and said, "Well, you want fifty dollars for this thing." And I didn't hear back from him. I thought, "Okay, it must be insulted." So I, I went to the antique mall and said, "Well, let's go buy the one that doesn't have this carriage here, because I'm just so curious about how this works. Because it's fascinating how this thing works. What little I know about it, even still." And so I went there, and they originally, I believe, wanted um, $90 for the machine. And before I could say, you know, those calculators you have in the basement, the guy immediately said, you can have them for $30 a piece. So plainly, the first time around, anybody has shown any interest in this thing was like at least a year since it was sitting there that I know of, that anyone showed up any interest, and it was like, get rid of these things. Anybody that's going to take them, haul them off. So I uh, got the, the machine run out the carriage for $30. So literally, only a few hours later, this guy finally contacts me and says, yeah, I'll sell you the calculator for adding machine for $50. And you also have to take this uh, really early electric typewriter. 
So I got an Electromatic IBM typewriter. I think it's their first IBM electric typewriter. And talking to this fellow, apparently this thing came out of uh, his buddy's car that had been sitting in this thing had been sitting in his car, his buddy's car, for 20 years. And that's about all I know about it, other than, based on the serial number, and I can't remember who, which one was which, one was made in 1913, one was made in 1917. Here's Engage. And this machine, I think, has subtraction, and it obviously has a lot of features for being able to print. And it looks like things like this knob has been busted off, but largely it's here. It's a lot of surface rust. I assume that this stuff was nickel-plated at some point. All the rust, all, all the metal has become pitted. and been sitting in the back of this car, presumably, for 20 years. Um, and that's really all I know about it. I've cranked it on it a couple times, and the numbers don't change in the display. There is a display here, if you can see through the dirt, um, some numbers, but they aren't, they aren't moving. And if I type in some numbers, uh, one number can move it. I don't think anybody's moving. So I'm not sure I even how to work anything. Maybe I have to push something. But uh, nobody seems to be running. So a lot of stuff to learn here and clean up and, f and figure out just what I'm going to do with this guy. I, I basically, I'd like to get it at least minimally functionally operational, clean it up so it looks nice. Okay, so the first mystery solved is how to get this crank off. You can push it all the way forward and you can pull it out. I uh, can't quite figure out how to get it back in again other than maybe it whack it in there pretty hard, but it comes out if you move it all the way forward. Next thing is I've taken the, uh, the thumb nut off the opposite side here and this thumb nut is coming off and I think that will loosen the case here. Like that's somewhat loose. The mystery here is this carriage system. I think this whole thing will come off, but mystified as to exactly how that works at the moment. I'm also mystified as to how to get it to slide. Um, the next thing is I understand is the Bros machines kind of locked their cases with a key, which of course I do not have. Rod Sterling has the keys, but I don't know where Rod Sterling is. So, um, the BSS 1250 guy, he mentioned that uh, you can get a, a, um, like a, a thin card of some sort material in there, and you can apparently push this um, key latch mechanism over without the key itself. It's quite tight in there, though. So. Okay, I found that a, a very thin, I think this is um, 15, 20 thousandths aluminum shim stock has got this uh, little latch mechanism undone. Okay, now, gotta get this massive, elaborate lid off. Damaging anybody. Looks like several of the knobs are just gonna have to come off. Okay. That is, um, this one is called CGE Normal. Remember that, CEG Normal. This is Control control Norms. And, uh, I think that will be sufficient to get this off. Just get a list. On the right side, the left side, I should say, is going to be. See if I can take off. Hmm, okay. Oh, those troubles. And I'm not even sure if it's these keys. What else can be? There's an impression it might be just these three items. Oh, I see. There was a, a little indent back here. Okay. In progress. Uh -huh. All right. Yay. Now, that's kind of nice how they did this. It's um, held on with some clips and screws, and 
you know, this thing's over 100 years old and the glass is in good shape. Let's hope I keep it that way. Put that carefully up to one side for the moment. And it's it, the mechanism for latching this guy is just a little hook. A little piece of sheet metal works very nice with that. It's surprisingly clean in here. I uh, actually see those numbers pretty nice. That case actually did a good job. I thought I'd still see a whole bunch of nasty stuff in here, but this is amazingly clean. They did a good job on sealing this guy. This is amazing. That's not bad looking in there. That's 20 years in a car, and who knows where else this guy's been sitting. I wouldn't have thought that would be that clean inside. Huh. I am amazed. It obviously gets dirtier when you get back here where it's more open, but that is really something. Beautiful workmanship for something that's over a hundred years old. I'm just amazed how nice this is. Well, it turns out just being less timid is what it takes. Just uh, move it all the way forward. You press it in there, and it goes in just fine and crank. And uh, now that I've got the cover off, I'm noticing the numbers do move. And it looks like it's odd it's going between 7 and 8. It's interesting how that mechanism goes up, mechanism's down, mechanism's up. So that's interesting how it works out. I'm amazed that things, um, you know, pushing a hundred years in a bit, and those numbers are amazingly uh, readable. I'm surprised how clean it is in here. About. So, this is going to be eight. It goes between seven and eight, seven and eight. I'm not really sure why. Obviously, it's still a bit of a black box to me, but. After much mystification, I managed to finally figure out one of the more key problems this guy had. This button here was pushed down, which is pound list, and the sh its shaft is... Oh, the thing is big. Uh, shaft is bent. And so it took a, a screwdriver to... and, and then uh, pulling up on this guy. Finally got that pulled up. So now with that... Um, finally lift it up I can finally get it to actually add some so I'm going to type in a number here and it, it adds oh. surprising huh so whatever uh, Count list does was preventing me from doing that, so looks like we'll see if it will do some serious numbers now. Hey, that's very impressive. So we'll uh, type something in here again. Yes, yeah, <laughs> kind of amazing. I mean, it's cruddy as all heck on the outside, but on the inside, it actually looks pretty good. I even see some uh, oil in a few spots. It actually looks, you know, fairly liquid still. It isn't, like, completely uh, turned to sludge. Uh, the next thing, I guess, is how do I get the register to clear? That'd be kind of interesting to see. So, from what I understand, with most adding machines, you got to do a, a blind crank, so I think everything is off on the, on the uh, keyboard, so it didn't do anything. So now I think... I think this is the subtotal and this is a total so I think if I hit total I hold it down hey hey I got the uh, numbers to all clear and this guy drops down and now I think what I'll do is I'll put in something a little more recognizable I won't do the two red buttons. I think there's something more significant to those two. It's interesting it's red up to three, and then well, only this column is red up to nine, and then from here it's uh, 
month month characters and this one's a ret and this is int and coal something cold I don't know so here so one 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 wow that's kind of nice so it looks like the fundamentally big thing I've noticed so far with this guy is this one uh, um, key here its its arm has been bent its uh, shaft has been bent and uh, it was jamming up the work so far as I can tell so let's see here let's try and that's pretty impressive wow that is really very very impressive so uh, if I put in just simply one we should get one more and then I should see some carrying going on here. Uh, there's one. Okay, so let's go with um put in one there. Carried that one. Carried that one. That's the most impressive. Okay, oh went off one time. Okay. Very impressive. This guy supposedly has subtraction, so here's a question. Can I put in two? And can I flip this over to subtraction? It looks like it holds, you know, maybe you have to hold it down. I'll type in a one. I'll, I'll pull this down. Hmm. Well, it went to zero, anyways. I don't see. I think I put in a well. I put. I, I can't remember what I put in. Did I put in a two or one? <coughs> I'm back to one. Interesting. So I'm not really sure what. I'm not sure what just happened there. Maybe that's normal. Maybe that is subtraction. Uh, once again, the the manual I have is not for a machine that has subtraction. So. Um, Definitely more uncharted waters here for me. Let's see here. So, if I want to subtract, let's see, let's subtract these big numbers, right? Well, that'll be three. Okay, so now I'm going to do a subtraction. So I have to, I'm going to type in a four. Actually, it'd be an overflow. Let's not do that. Oh, well, that's the other thing about this guy. Most other uh, calculators and adding machines, you can push uh, the, uh, the next uh, button in the column and it'll pop the other one up. This one doesn't have that feature. You do have to use this guy back here to clear that out. So, type that 2 in. I'm going to hit the traction. It goes to 0. I lift up on it. And it comes up 1. Yeah, see, I, had, I believe I had three in there. It's hard to chew gum and talk at the same time. So, I'm not sure how the mechanism works. That's five, okay. So, and I'll do it. Okay, so there's nothing going on there, presumably, right? Type in a four. And I'm going to hit subtract. It doesn't latch, so I, it kind of, I'm guessing you have to hold it. It goes to zero for some reason. And it's still zero. One. Well, subtraction's a bit of a mystery. Okay, uh, kind of going over how these uh, selector wires work and how they um, interact with this um, it's kind of a rack and pinion system that is how this guy works there's in between these two guide um, plates with all these slots that these wires um, rest in there is a another plate that has uh, a basically a, a kind of a finger or hook on the end and then further down below is basically a, uh, a section of a gear it's, uh, you could almost consider it a rack and pinion, although in reality it's, uh, it's really just a large section of a, of, a, of a regular circular gear and they've just simply cut, cut out just the one section. And that basically 
the, um, the selector wires will basically stop this um, rack and pinion gear in its travels at whatever point that finger interacts with one of these pieces of wire. And the wire is deployed when you push a button. So like for instance that's the number one, that's number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and apparently number nine. Uh, sorry, oh, I think I had number eight. Let's see, let's do that again here. That's number eight. Didn't want to come off. And then number nine doesn't have a um, she doesn't have a wire, but apparently it it does the final selection. Apparently, if you if you have that, if you have anything in there, apparently, and you don't apparently need a wire for that one. Before I go babbling on too much about how this mechanism works, I thought I'd show this nice black and white photo of a cutaway of a Class One adding machine that the Smithsonian has available online. I'll leave the uh, URL link uh, in the description of this video below. And back in the day, the uh, patent office, they'd get these nice cutaways to demonstrate how the mechanism would work or show to the patent examiner. So this particular uh, cutaway uh, shows the hydraulic dampening cylinder maybe closer to the center line than it really would be. The center line plates that form the arm that moves the um, rack of the rack and pinion system on the front, the, when you get to the center, those plates are probably pretty straight. At the at the at the left and right extreme sides, they zigzag out quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, to the left is the print head part of the mechanism. And then above the rack is the stationary guide plates that kind of stabilize and position the um, rack. And then you can kind of see the 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 slot plates where the little wires slot through that capture the little hook if you if you look near the top of the uh, uh, the uh, rack uh, arc you'll see up the finger that the, those hooks uh, those wire loops snag on to stop those motions it gives you a pretty good idea of what it looks like on inside so I guess what I'll do is I'll press some keys here I'm gonna go up by one two three four five six seven eight so I got a whole bunch of them uh, selected, and then when I pull down on the um, on the arm, of course this guy wants to slide around. The rubber feet are a bit mummified; they don't grip very well. But you'll see that they're stopped at various points on their selector uh, wires. And right now, as as the uh, arm is being pulled down, the these individual little plates with the, with the rack and pinion gears and the fingers are being pulled down just with springs right now so they're free to move to their respective stops. Now as I um, release this arm and it moves back up you'll notice the um, the um, number wheels have been moved back into place and as this uh, hand crank moves up, there's a bar that goes across all along the bottom of these um, uh, rack and pinion plates, and it starts to actively push those guys up. And as it pushes them up and it reaches the surface of one to the next to the next, it'll start to um, push on these uh, these wheels and keep moving them until you get uh, all the um, uh, register wheels moved. So now I have in the machine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's basically it. And then as soon as the um, the machine's brought back up, if it the, the button isn't uh, for the repeat button isn't pressed, it releases the keyboard and uh, we're clear to add some more numbers. So now if I was to add say um, um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Once again, as I pull this guy down, the springs, and also you notice the register has moved out of the way. So now uh, the gears are on the register are not going to be moved as the rack and pinion large gear basically is pulled down by these springs individually until they reach 
various stops that are presented to them by the wires that have been pushed out by the push buttons. And each one comes down, finds their stop point. And now, when I start to release the, the handle and a spring power has been stored up, if I just simply release the, uh, the hand crank, it would just uh, flop back with just spring power and be st uh, um, buffered a bit by a um, hydraulic cylinder to keep it from being quite such a, a slammy affair. It, there is a bar that basically pushes all of these rack and pinions back up actively, an actual active force. You'll see the registers back in place. And now the rack and pinion pie shaped gears can engage with the pinions or gears on the register. And now the active mathematics occur. Now it's going to start to move numbers as each one of those is being lifted up by a, the bar that's pull, actively moving all these guys up. You also see some carrying going on with the carry mechanism further up. And there we go, we did all our carry and we're done there. And then it clears the keyboard again. So that's fundamentally how the the um, register, the keyboard numbers are, are set into the register. Now the next question is, okay, so I, I have I have my number, I'm, I'm all done with it, I basically want to print my tally, so now I can just put, pull down the arm, there's nothing in there, it clears the mechanism, now I can hit the total button, I can do the total, it clears the register now, and we're all done with that particular bit of math. Okay, so I thought I'd, I'd go over this um, mechanism a little bit further with this nice cutaway from the Smithsonian Institution. A uh, class one machine, you're seeing a close-up view of the uh, register here, the uh, rack and the arm. And I, in my next description, I, I go into how I, you enter uh, um, the, the values you've selected on these wires into the register. Also, this particular machine is an adding, adding machine only. It doesn't have the subtraction, extra subtraction wheels. And I'll go into that a little bit later. But right now, the machine is basically in a position where the register is, is sitting out and the racks are about to be moved up, or I guess I should say actually, I guess it's down, come think of it. So as you crank on the uh, on the big crank, these springs are pulled by a little crank that's back here somewhere, and these individual racks are free to move on these arms until the finger is uh, stopped by one of these wires. They cut out this little section here that would have had another set of these plates that has the wires on it, so it does add a bit of confusion, but it does show the, the full length of the uh, the rack here and then the finger. Ultimately, this finger would stop at one of these uh, wires. They're um, pulled in by one of these keys. You can kind of see the wires go to the various key mechanisms here. They're on the, their own little kind of a little crank. And then once this has been pulled down to wherever its stop point is, and all the others have been pulled down, your hand crank is, is to its full position and you start the return stroke, that's when this register gets um, pivoted back into engagement with this uh, rack here. That then these pinions are, are, are going to be driven by this guy. And it's in the return stroke, there's this bar that you can see cut away here. Everything that's red is by, uh, by the way, is cut away. There's more material further up that's obviously been omitted by the cutout. This bar then starts return back up and it starts to make contact with the various bars here, the various positions that, it, that this whole rack had been stopped by the, once again, the wires. And now this can, thing can be actively turning this register wheel until you get to the full stroke. And then ultimately, uh, things like carrying mechanisms, here's part of the carry, part of the carry here, and then there's a slot in here that allows the rack to be slid up and down, but basically it would be a, a digit unit. And right now in this case, it looks like the carry mechanism has actually been activated. This guy has been pulled out to cause this dog to um, move back. And normally there's a, a, a kind of a foot 
that hits this pin, which you can't see from this side. You see the rivet kind of side of the pin, but the, the full length of the pin is on the other side of this plate. And there's a foot, basically, that keeps this pin pushed down and this whole rack pushed down. And then it's uh, it stopped at its uh, slide on this pin here. And that normally, uh, that's when it's not being carried. So right now, basically, this guy here is in a, in a carry state basically otherwise this whole rack would be down and it, it, it would be at the top of this uh, slot travel here so that's kind of what that is and I thought it was a nice color photo that uh, luckily there's more of these at the Smithsonian Institution and I'll leave the uh, URL link for, uh, to, for for you folks if you want to look at uh, these other still photos Okay, a further attempt at uh, demonstrating how this um, little rack and pinion kind of a system works and how the register moves it back and forth. I'll show how it uh, works in addition here. So I'm going to, with the register clear, I'm going to type in uh, my favorite one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and enter that in very slowly. And notice that that bar that I'm talking about comes down. And then these springs pull all those registers down to the various locations. I'm all the way down. Now I'm going to go start going back up. Now the register is engaged into this rack convenience. And now this bar starts to pull up and starts to engage on all those separate little plates that are kind of fanned across and go into those uh, little guide plates that then have the slots with the wires and the, the, the moving rack and pinion has its little finger that touches um, those, those uh, guide wires that select the numbers. And there we go. So we've got a number in there. And I'll just do that again. I think what I'll do is I'll put it on repeat so I don't have to type this in every time. Okay, so we do that again. It, uh, the register withdraws. We get our number selection at, by a string, an individual spring power. And now this bar is going to pull, and the register is back engaged, and the bar is going to start to push all those selected plates with the wreck and pinion back up. Our wheels, all the pinions turn, and there it is. Okay, so that's addition. So the next question is subtraction. Why, uh, why is subtraction isn't working right or it doesn't seem to be working right I'm, be, I'm beginning to think that uh, that it may be kind of the the bug or feature as it were of this particular design they they uh, probably tried to resolve this and for, or for some mechanical reason they needed to actually uh, do it this way and this is the, the part I can't understand because otherwise it does work perfectly fine if you do an extra hand crank so for instance I want to put in five 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 I put in five 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 I want to subtract, say, uh, 10. Let's set it to subtract. And it does 5544 4 instead of 5545. 5. Now, if I just simply do a, a, a blind crank, don't have anything in the keyboard, and pull it again, it basically corrects itself. It now goes 5545, 5, 5, which is correct. So it, it seems to be that they have to do an extra... Uh, crank uh, for subtraction and it must have something to do with how the gear mechanism uh, works uh, you know if I guess if you can live with that being correctly the nature of the machine it should certainly beats the heck out of doing um, nines complement which is just awful as far as I'm concerned I I don't know how people in the day could have um, dealt with that it would have been very difficult this is a nice cutaway of a much later class one adding machine and this was probably I'm guessing late 20s early 30s as you can see they keep in this design they go from this very early adding machine that Burroughs uh, Mr. Burroughs himself developed and they just keep adding stuff and features and adding stuff and features and here you have this incredible motor drive system that will move the carriage back and forth and it uh, operates the uh, mechanism without the hand crank and in this system um, this is probably the best picture I've been able to find yet on um, looking at the 
some traction wheels. Now, you'll have to take into account that this machine, they've added yet, it looks like still another um, mechanism here. Here's the classic adding wheels. Here's the reversing uh, subtraction wheels that I'm kind of talking about. And it looks like, and this is the part you'll have to ignore, they've added yet another set of gears here and probably some other mechanisms over here that I'm not sure what's going on. I, I suspect it might be a a second um, register on this side. And if it's engaging on, on this guy, I'm not really sure. It certainly does look like that's what it is. It looks like there's even more teeth, more... Um, more pinion wheels, more gears in here than uh, than classically to have here. So what's going on here? I'm not sure. You have to ignore that part. But if you just focus on the classic uh, adding wheels here and the subtracting wheels, it gives you an idea how this this little subcarriage here um, rocks back and forth on the main uh, arm that then moves this whole mechanism into the uh, rack gear here. Right now it is separate subtraction looks like. It looks like even these added things are out of the way. So here's subtraction with re reverse wheels. And then once again, if you wanted addition, this whole mechanism would rock a bit so that these would be presented when this arm engages in that. So hopefully you get that. Um, <laughs> as you can see, they, uh, they kept adding to this guy and adding to this guy and adding to this guy. And it just gets to be quite the stunning uh, mechanical marvel. Uh, I, as near as I can gauge from the patent information, they did stuff with this guy clear into the 40s, actually. So I'd like to talk about subtraction now. Uh, in addition, so far the register uh, has been moved by the gears that are immediately mounted to the side of the uh, number wheels. And this extra set of gears that have been added for subtraction have been kind of kept tucked out of the way of engaging with the rack, large rack selector gear plate, uh, gear wheel here. Um, so what they did to do subtraction, they added a pivot point here. And normally in the earlier machines, this arm moves you know, in and out to uh, get the register out of the way of the gears while the, all the numbers are being selected and then engage back in when you're actually going to do the math. Um, to do subtraction, they wanted to be able to ro uh, rotate those um, number wheels backwards. So they added this extra gear here, and they put the, the whole register assembly on a pivot point that normally it doesn't move back and forth for normal addition. But now for this added feature, they have a pivot point. So this whole thing's now on a separate plate that can pivot at this point, and it's controlled. Its ultimate uh, stops are, are, are controlled by this pin here, as you can see. And so with this extra gear, you generate a, a reverse rotation to the um, the number wheels. So now what happens is if I put in five 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 five, as in with all these mechanical calculators, you first have to add a number to the register. So in addition, you just add that in there. Now if I want to subtract, I'll say subtract 33. I switch it to subtract. Now what'll happen is if I uh, pull down on the arm. And these um, the numbers get put into the racks. You'll notice that the register gets tilted. The whole thing tilts. Now it's tilted. Now what happens is the subtraction wheels are now presented to the um, rack gear and can engage. And now with that extra gear, you now have a reversing motion to the normal gears that are on the side of the number wheels and you'll get a, re re rota a reverse rotation of your um, wheels and subtraction basically. And there's that. So, uh, now the kind of the bug in the system of course is I'm still off by that one digit and that's one thing I can't quite um, get my head around why that's a problem but it looks like the way they have built this mechanism they have a carry uh, arm here for the uh, first uh, the least significant digit and it looks like they purposely flick that number one digit more over and then when you go back to addition they flick it back and there must be some subtlety to the design that requires that and that's the part I can't understand because right now it's saying 5521 when it sure should be saying 5522 but with the um, keyboard clear and I do a blind uh, uh, stroke it goes back to addition and it adds that erroneous value 
uh, back in, as it were. And so now we're up to the number that we're supposed to be, which is 5522. Two. So it seems to be that as long as you take into account that you have to do an extra crank at the end of all of this when you're doing subtraction, the numbers do come out right. The question is, is why is it the first uh, digit, the least significant digit, require this extra little stroke back and forth, which looks to be purposeful? Um, just looking at the mechanism, I can't see anything wrong. And uh, I've been reading up the patent information to try and understand this a little bit better. And I think uh, I kind of see the history of how they came up with this design. And I'll probably go into that in a moment here. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about the patents on this machine and, and how I figured out that uh, the mechanism as I have in this machine works just exactly as it's supposed to. Uh, the patent that covers this is uh, 1172484. And they had done several patents before, and then there's a patent referencing this patent afterwards that finally was, I was able to uh, use to discover this particular patent. Uh, previous ones, they had they'd come up with there's kind of a rocking system. Here's the subtraction gear, here's the addition gear. Uh, the classic machine would have only had just this addition gear and this everything rocks or, or, or is tilted perhaps I should say, tilted in and out for uh, engaging with these gears normally for addition. For subtraction this gear will rock into place and I'll show that in a moment here. So here's a, a close-up of that patent um, on the right hand side, the side that I've been kind of doing the demo uh, showing the actual mechanism working. Now here it's in normal edition, the, uh, the adding gears and register uh, tiles are engaged with the rack gears and this arm of course is, does the tilting for that whole thing to pull it in and out and then you can kind of see the subtraction wheel and the little carriage mechanism that's pivoted at this point that can rock the addition wheel or the subtraction wheels into place. And coming down here you'll see that the the uh, register mechanism has been tilted out of the way just like normal at this pivot point and the whole little sub carriage that carries these two uh, adding and subtracting wheels is starting to rock back so to present the subtraction wheels to the carriage uh, to the uh, rack. Now the uh, register has been tilted back into place, so now the subtraction wheels are engaged. And there's this extra carry mechanism that's been added. The, the original machines with um, addition never had a carry mechanism on the least significant digit for, um, you know, doing anything there because it wasn't necessary. And the, the, the rack has this extra um, carry mechanism just like all the other ones do and I'll, I'll kind of go in that a little bit. There's a slot here that will move this rack up and down and it's based off these little uh, dogs and fingers here and um, uh, little feet here that uh, carry uh, paws will engage to cause this whole gear here to uh, slide up and down in order to do a carry mechanism you'll add. You'll actually basically add an extra digit when this guy slides up and down in this slot. But ignoring that part, the this mechanism here will tilt into place and push against these pins that will um, cause one digit shift in the least significant digit, the cents, the, the pennies section, I guess, the, 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 the rightmost wheel uh, of the set of wheels. And it will generate what appears to be, at least in subtraction, a, a, an error by one. But apparently that's needed because you have to take into account this carry carrying that you have to do now that you're in subtraction. So if you ignore the fact that it's it's wrong basically while you're in subtraction, as soon as you go back to addition, it, it, it corrects itself. So we're in subtraction here. This wheel is uh, generating a counter rotation for the normal uh, register dials and they're now rotating backwards. Now if we have done all of our um, subtraction here and we're about ready to go back to basically addition. We got to do this extra um, crank stroke at the, at the hand crank in order for this mechanism to work. Uh, in addition you do one blind crank to uh, clear the mechanism before you hit your total button and get your um, your total value. Here you have to do that second uh, hand crank and apparently the second hand crank you 
you, you'll get the usual um, rocking back to clear the register. The um, it will uh, tilt the um, this little sub carriage back into place, so we're back into addition. And then this little extra carry mechanism that they have here for the first significant value, the first digit, now pushes on this side of this little pawl, and that will flick the, the the lowest number back to its normal position, basically carrying that number back into place. It's done it here, and your your numbers are restored, and that's basically it. And then uh, later uh, in this patent, they they also are covering trying to. Uh, deal with um, subtraction and trying to show um, um, in, in the case of banking that your account if you're doing like a, a, um, a checking account that you've over withdrawn so they've added some extra digits here that are in the nines complement style in my machine they didn't uh, they didn't carry on with, it, with that idea they, it's just the classic wheels with single digits they don't have this extra little set of digits going in the opposite direction basically and shift it off by one which is what the nines complement is about so i don't have this this extra sight wheel i think they decided that was probably just too confusing and probably not necessary because ultimately you really don't, i don't think you really need it maybe it adds something to it but they weren't able to implement anything automatic and there's a gauge from this patent that would uh, take into account that you have an overdraft because uh, it doesn't look like it prints anything indicating that you have an overdraft condition on that so that might still be it may be a later patent that I haven't noticed that but at least in my machine they didn't do the nines complement to it which just deals with overdraft and then over here um, this deals with the carry mechanism which I'll have to go into uh, at some other point it's just uh, the video is already getting to be kind of lengthy and if you're interested in it uh, it was done by a fellow named Frank Renge. He did the earlier patents on, uh, that I mentioned, on uh, trying to clear out this whole problem with, uh, with subtraction. And his earlier patent deals with uh, an extra button push and so forth. And then there's a, yet another patent uh, that goes into some dual um, mechanism where you can... Uh, He, he, he splits up the carry mechanisms into two separate little carry mechanisms and that patent obviously it, 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 it was getting quite involved in the mechanism so they ultimately I think dropped the idea of actual implementing that one so this one basically is it the, the, uh, if you look up 1172484 if you're curious about this patent stuff this is basically how this machine works and it, you know in subtraction you, you simply move this lever you, um, you, know, you type in your numbers when you're done doing your subtraction, you instead of one um, ha hand crank, you, you do two hand cranks at the end of all your subtraction. You can do a series of subtractions, by the way, keeping that lever in that position. And, and as soon as you basically go to addition uh, or do your, your total or your subtotal, you'll have to do two blind cranks. And then that value that had been flicked over by one gets flicked back. Then everything else is correct at that point. Uh, you basically, you aren't looking at the display during that time or your account for the fact that it's off by one. And it works fine. It actually, the subtraction mechanism, it, it works well. And I'm surprised at this point how little seems to be wrong with this machine. So I'll carry on with this guy and uh, try and get some other stuff done on it.